హాలో ఎవరివన్ ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ వెంకటేశ్వర రావు ఇన్ ది లెక్చర్ ఫిఫ్టీ వన్ వీ హ్యావ్ హ్యాడ్ గాన్ త్రూ ది సెకండరీ సెల్స్ అండ్ ఇన్ దిస్ లెక్చర్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు ల్యాన్ ఫ్యూయల్ సెల్స్ అన్లైక్ ది సెకండరీ సెల్స్ వేర్ వీ కెన్ రీఛార్జ్ ది సెకండరీ సెల్స్ వెన్ దే ఎగ్జాస్టెడ్ but in fuel cells there is no need to recharge the battery or cell and we can use them continuously how it is possible let us see its construction thereby we will come to know how it is possible right fuel cell is a galvanic cell and it is so designed to convert the energy produced by the combustion into electrical energy one such successful cell is h2o2 fuel cell right h2o2 fuel cell h2o2 fuel cell right i repeat in fuel cell and in this type of cells no need to recharge the cell and we can use them continuously how it is possible right let us see its construction thereby we will uh, come to know how it is possible right let us see the construction of a uh, uh, fuel cell right and this is the setup of a fuel cell right so fuel cell this is the arrangement or setup of a fuel cell so in this fuel cell this is anode and this is cathode and this is electrolytic chamber in this porous carbon anode porous carbon is used as electrodes in fuel cells porous carbon electrodes are used as electrodes porous carbon material is used as electrodes so porous carbon anode containing sortable catalyst it is your porous that is porous carbon material is used as electrode that is anode and cathode also porous carbon cathode containing sortable catalyst so porous carbon cathode and porous carbon anode containing sortable catalyst are incorporated in this cell to increase the rate of electrodes reactions that is finely divided platinum or palladium is used as a catalyst in this uh, electrodes so uh, catalysts are used uh, to increase the rates of electrode reactions right so these two are electrodes and aqueous koh or noh concentrated solution of aqueous that is aqueous koh or noh solution is placed in between anode and cathode and it acts as electrolyte and it acts as electrolyte so coming to the end this is a hydrogen gas inlet and this is the oxygen gas inlet let us see the electrode reactions at anode already i told you fuel cell is a galvanic cell so galvanic cell means at anode at anode what takes place oxidation takes place so here the anode um, h2 gas inlet is close to the anode right so in this uh, at anode oxidation takes place that is um, 2 h2 gas undergoes oxidation that is uh, four hydrogens lost its electrons and it combines with oh minus ions that is uh, 4OH minus ions 4OH minus ions these OH minus ions are 
uh, provided from uh, KOH solution. So, 4 OH minus ions E aqueous uh, gives rise to and after the loss of 4 electrons by 4 hydrogen atoms uh, and that 4 H plus ions combines with 4 OH minus ions uh, and it forms 4 molecules of uh, water liquid plus 4 electrons. So, that is the reaction takes place at anode and at cathode and at cathode what happens at cathode reduction takes place at uh, cathode so oxygen gas undergoes oxygen gas undergoes reduction that is uh, those four electrons are <coughs> gained by the oxygen and it forms uh, four oh minus ions or OH minus ions E aqueous, right? So, reduction takes place at a, reduction takes place at a cathode, right? So, these four electrons are gained in this uh, uh, reduction reaction and it forms a uh, uh, four OH minus ions aqueous, aqueous uh, hydroxide ions. So, these are the reactions that takes place at anode and cathode. What you observe from this reaction sum, water is formed, water is formed at anode, water is formed at anode. What happens in this cell when H2 gas is allowed to, when H2 gas is allowed to bubbled into the KOH solution or NaOH solution, hydrogen undergoes oxidation. When oxygen gas is allowed to bubble into KOH solution, that oxygen gas undergoes reduction, right? So, when hydrogen and oxygen are bubbled, are allowed to bubble into KOH solution, that is electrolyte, KOH or NaOH solution uh, undergoes, hydrogen undergoes oxidation and um, oxygen undergoes reduction, right? So, as long as hydrogen and oxygen are allowed to bubbled into KOH solution, I repeat, as long as hydrogen and oxygen is allowed to bubbled into KOH or NaOH solution, this cell continues continue to produce 0.9 volts, right? That cell continuously produces, continuously produces 0.9 volts voltage. So, 0. The EMF of the cell is 0.9 volts, right? So, you keep this point in your mind as long as as long as hydrogen and oxygen are allowed to bubble into KOH or NaOH solution, this fuel cell produces, uh, produces a potential of 0 0.9 volts. And that is the reason this cell does not need recharge and, does, and never becomes dead. Because hydrogen and oxygen is allowed to bubble into KOH solution, cell automatically cell produces 0 0.9 volts EMF, right? So that is why no need to, as long as, as long as hydrogen and oxygen is allowed to bubble into KOH or NaOH solution, the cell produces 0 0.9 volts. Right? That is why this cell does not need recharge and never become dead. So that we can use this cell continuously. And this cell is, and this cell was used in Apollo moon flight. Apollo moon flight. So this fuel cell was used in Apollo moon flight. Uh, uh, where, uh, where the product so obtained at anode that is water 
water was used for drinking water was uh, uh, used for drinking so, so that uh, this electrode reaction enables and uh, it it, um, uh, it provides drinking water also it provides drinking water so that is the advantage of this uh, uh, that is the one of the advantages of this cell so this cell produces 0 0.9 volts and the product so obtained at anode was used for uh, drinking uh, in Apollo uh, moon flight right then there is a another important point uh, in this uh, regard that is uh, that is um, uh, if, as long as hydrogen and oxygen is allowed because uh, when uh, flights Apollo moon flight is flying uh, uh, the hydrogen and oxygen is continuously provided right continuously and continuously provided going to the continuously uh, uh, the as hydrogen and oxygen is continuously provided to the cell uh, the cell produces 0 0.9 volts uh, right so one more important point in this cell is that um, what is that uh, one important point is um, usually in general in general conventional conversion of uh, chemical energy into electrical energy involves uh, involves three steps that is uh, conventional conversion of uh, conventional conversion of uh, chemical energy involves uh, chemical energy chemical energy first converted into heat first converted into heat that is the step one this is the conventional conversion of uh, chemical energy into electric energy so first chemical energy is converted into heat then heat is converted into mechanical energy mechanical energy and then this mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy and this is the third step this is the third step usually in the conventional conversion of chemical energy so galvanic cell is the cell and that can converts chemical energy into electrical energy so that is the conventional conversion of chemical energy into el electric energy but uh, that conversion includes uh, three steps that conversion involves uh, three steps that is uh, first chemical energy is converted into heat and then heat is converted into mechanical energy and then mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy right but uh, the extent of heat converted into mechanical energy i repeat the extent of heat that converted into mechanical mechanical energy is limited by second law of thermodynamics right i repeat the extent of heat converted into mechanical energy is limited by second law of thermodynamics what is second law of thermodynamics uh, heat cannot be completely converted into energy right that is the second law of thermodynamics heat cannot be completely converted into work so this heat cannot be completed into mechanical energy but but the thing here is here is in fuel cells uh, chemical energy is converted into electric energy with uh, with 100% uh, efficiency with 100% uh, efficiency right so actually can uh, i repeat uh, conventional conversion of chemical energy into el electric energy involves three steps that is chemical energy into heat heat into mechanical energy and mechanical energy to electric energy but the extent of heat converted into mechanical energy is limited by second law of thermodynamics because what is second law of thermodynamics heat cannot be completed into heat cannot be completed into work right 
but uh, but uh, in fuel cells uh, chemical energy is completely converted into electric energy and its efficiency is 100 percent how it is possible how it is possible it is possible and the, you recall this statement second law of thermodynamics when the system continuously undergoes changes when the system continuously undergoes changes we can convert the uh, we can convert the heat into mechanical energy with 100 percent efficiency you got my point right when the system is continuously undergoes changes when the system continuously undergoes changes because um, here the ox hydrogen enters and bubbled into the KOH solution oxygen enters and bubbled into the KOH solution and this is continuously to take place and the two reactions are continue to take place in the fuel cell so the system is continuously undergoes changes in such case we can convert the heat into mechanical energy with 100 percent efficiency right so therefore uh, uh, of course the second step is limited by second law of thermodynamics uh, but the system continuously continuously undergoes changes uh, and that continuous change enables the fuel cell efficiency hundred that continuous uh, uh, undergo that system continuously undergoes changes and that enables the cell to produce uh, or to convert uh, total uh, chemical energy into uh, el electric energy so that is uh, its efficiency is 100 percent so that is the main advantage of a uh, fuel cell but there is another there is a uh, disadvantage in this uh, fuel cell because uh, that that the disadvantage is uh, these cells are operated at uh, high temperatures so that is the disadvantage of a uh, fuel cell and the advantage of fuel cell is uh, in this uh, uh, chemical energy is converted into electric energy with 100 percent uh, efficiency i hope you all understand understood the uh, commercial cells that is uh, uh, primary cells secondary cells and fuel cells right uh, these are very important these are the uh, advancement these are the advances in electrochemical cells i hope you all understand understood this uh, uh, lecture and if you really like this video you please extend your support uh, by like share comment thank you thank you for watching in the next video i shall come up with uh, another concept thank you thank you for watching